Before we close out tonight, I would like to piggyback off what uh, our brother Talib has said and also address a little bit of the commentary I saw in the chat room. <clears throat> After I do that, brother Talib, you can uh, bring bring everything to your to uh, your closing remarks and just take us out after after I do that okay all right definitely you have time yes I do okay one thing that must be understood in order for us to be successful in order for us to begin to solve our problem once and for all is we must become a people. We speak as though we are a people and we're not. We're just a bunch of folks doing our thing. We have not been a people. Of course, our ancestors was not a people. They were slaves. And then these slaves were set loose, not set free. They were set loose to live or die. And they did not come together as a people. Everybody went their way. You make it or you don't. And even to this day, we are all in our little separate groups or we are just individuals. Nowadays, it's about individualism. We don't care nothing about groups. A few years ago during the civil rights era, there was a group mentality, but there was no people mentality. There's a difference. We got in our groups. There was the Nation of Islam. There was the Black Panther Party, SNCC, blah, blah, blah. Southern Christian Leadership Conference, blah, blah, blah. Everybody into their groups. And we do our own thing, like James Brown said. But doing your own thing has caused you to be in the, like Papa said, in the predicament that we find ourselves in today. Because only a people and the power of a people can change this situation. You must become a people. During the 60s, we gravitated upon the label called black. I'm black and I'm proud. Black, 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 black power. And it worked for a little while. But still we was in groups because we was black power. But I'm I'm Nation of Islam. I'm black power, but I'm I'm Black Panther Party. I'm whatever. There was no attempt to be a people. There was division. There was no unity in the 1960s, contrary to popular belief. The only unity was everybody was complaining about the same problem. But there was no unity in how to solve that problem. There was no unity in becoming a people. You must become a people because if you don't become a people, then you don't see other persons like yourself. You don't view yourselves as family. So when Huey P. Newton went to jail, there was a few people outraged. Free, free Huey. I, I don't remember or didn't hear that the Nation of Islam 
uh, printed in the Muhammad Speaks, free Huey P. Newton. Uh, we need to get he, Brother Huey out of jail. I don't, I don't remember that. I mean, they could have done it. I don't think they, I don't think the Nation of Islam did that. Huey P. Newton was in jail on his own, and those people who support Huey, they were the ones that rallied and tried to get that man out of jail. Um, I don't remember Dr. King speaking on Huey P. Newton. Get that man out of jail. Everybody is doing their, their own thing. And that's what's going to keep you on the bottom. And that's what's going to seal your fate. As Dr. Claude Anderson said, you're going to be either extinct or you are going to be the permanent underclass. That's what we are on our way to being right now because we're not a people. You must become a people. The reason why I chose Soul Brothers and Sisters as an identity, as a label, because under that label, all our similarities, all those things that connect us is the, found, is the foundation or the umbrella. And all these other things that we identify with can go under that umbrella. So I'm a soul man, I'm a soul brother, but I'm Nation of Islam. I'm a soul brother, but I'm Moorish. I'm a soul brother, but I'm Christian. That's the way it was under black power. That's the way it was under soul in the 1960s. All these things under one umbrella. And quite truthfully and honestly, using soul power, using soul is more better than black because it takes you out of the race crap because we are more than race. The, the problem with race is the reason why we're in the condition that we're in. Black was chosen to be targeted to be oppressed. It is the reason, black is the reason why we are suffering the way we are today. Why would you wanna hold on to something that caused your oppression and you think that that something is going to free you relieve you of that oppression when black, something that you did not create, a European creation, black is a racial construct created by Europeans in the late 1700s. And this we know, but we hold on to these labels. You should not want to be or have any kind of relations with anything outside of yourself that you did not create those things that would, would cause your victimization. You should not want that. So when we say soul brothers and sisters, I don't know the origins. I don't know exactly where it come from. I am very sure it has religious uh, connotations or whatever, but it came from us. It came from us. It did not come from Africa, did not come from China, did not come from Asia. This is something that belongs to you and me, it's us. And we can define it with however we feel it should be because it's mine, it's ours. And you take that identity and then you unite under that and rally under that one identity that put us all under one umbrella so we can become a people. If you don't become a people, you're not gonna solve anything. It's not going to happen. Like I said, you can be a Christian, you can be a Moor, you can be a Muslim, you can be anything you want to. But you must become a people. You must become a people first. If you cannot become a people, you're done. It's simple as that. And maybe you are African because Africans are divided. If it was not for the division of Africans, the Arab or the European slave trade couldn't have never have happened, but they don't see themselves as a people. They were in their own nations, in their own tribes. And you see what happened to a whole entire continent. They have fallen and chances are they will not rise again. <clears throat> so really this conversation, if you can't become a people, our conversation really is done. We just wait on death. This conversation is done. You can feel good, like animals waiting to slaughter. Like I said in one of my last talks with us, 
those animals at the slaughterhouse just living their life until it's time for them to die. They just living a life, eating grass, cock-a-doo-to-doo if you're a chicken, until it's time to go to the slaughterhouse and get your head cut off and sliced up and, and whatever. But until then, the animals act normal, like nothing's going to happen. That's how we, we do. We just act like nothing's happening. We act normal until it's time for the slaughter. And that's, it's just a matter of time before the big slaughter. You think you're upset now. You're not really that upset, but the big slaughter is coming. I don't wish to be around. Some of y'all younger brothers and sisters, you might experience that and see that, but it's coming because you have not prepared. You are in a slaughterhouse waiting for the slaughter but you're comfortable like those animals at the slaughterhouse I don't know how many of you ever been to a slaughterhouse I know right there in Nebraska there's a lot of slaughterhouses and if you ever go to those slaughterhouses and just watch the animals they, they don't, they're not tripping off the fact that in a few days or in a few hours they're getting ready to die that's why, that's why they are there to be slaughtered. We don't become a people. We're going to be slaughtered. It's just a matter of time. We must become a people so we can rally. So we can see ourselves as family. We don't see each other as family. A lot of us are individual. I got mine. You get yours. That's the kind of mentality we have. And as groups, that's how we think as a group. I'm a Pan-African. And you hear this, you hear this from Guy Nollywood all the time, that crazy Pan-African fella. I'm not looking to get everybody because you know you can't get everybody because what you're talking about is divisive. All these things, these ideologies and beliefs are very divisive, hateful, nasty. You don't, you're not, you don't have no care about a people. You only care about your group. When you care about your family, when mother goes to the store and buy food for her family and her and her husband are good parents, you have to consider, well, little Bobby don't like peas. Little Susie is allergic to peaches. You have to take in consideration all your family members, but then you have abusive Parents, if I put it on your plate, you're going to eat it. And that's, that's the mentality or the mindset many of these people who claim they love us, that's what they have. Whatever they put on our plate, we're supposed to eat it. Abusive people, nasty, not considerate. They don't see you as family just see you as some kind of tool to be used. So we must become a people. If we don't become a people, we might as well just, it's the end. There's no more uh, reason for us to continue this talk. And that's the purpose of the Mississippi campaign. It's an activity. If we implement it and we work together, that activity will cause you to become a people because you're, doing something, especially when it's successful, you be like, wow, I'm different from you, but look what we did together. And I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I'm gay. It don't make any difference. I was homeless. I was two years old. But look what we did together in our differences. This is what we have to understand. You must become a people. Another thing that really mess us up is many of our groups, our, our, our leaders or whatever, they are in a rush to be international. I want to be internationally known. I hear Dr. Umar Johnson, I've been, I've been to Africa. I've been all over the world. They want to say those things. You've been all over the world and you're international. 
but you have not solved your problem at home first. Brother Talib was talking about Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Perfect example. Well, you see, uh, we have temples all over the country. We have temples in St. Louis and New York and New Orleans and Houston and Los Angeles. And we got temples in Ghana and the, the Caribbean. But look at Chicago. Look at Chicago. You have not done it. You have not healed, made no, no. You are, your headquarters in Chicago is in shambles. But what if you took that energy that you're using to go all over the world and concentrate to get Chicago right so Chicago can be the example, so Chicago can be that, that light? Now you got something going on. But we're so in a hurry to be famous. Look what I got. I'm all over the world. But look where you live. Look at your headquarters. So in a rush. There are people back in the day in the 60s, there were people who became leaders. That was not their, their intent to become a leader. They was just wanted to solve their problem. Dr. King didn't ask to be no a leader. He knew he was being raised to be uh, the leader of a church but not of a movement seeking justice for his people. He didn't ask for that. Malcolm didn't ask for that. He didn't ask to be for a leader. And so in 2022, we have people, they want to be leaders. They really don't qualify, but they like the idea because of the women and the money, all those things that come with leadership but nobody really ready for a bullet and they really don't have the skills and they don't have the vision in order to be a leader, but people gravitate toward them because they're charismatic and they sound like they know what they're doing. And, and they offer you the, the same usual feel good rhetoric that we're used to hearing. Leadership is, is not a joke. Many of you have held management positions. Being a manager, being a president of a company is great responsibility. Because all everything that goes wrong, when you go to McDonald's and get a cold fish sandwich, nobody cares about the cashier. You say, can I see the manager? You want to see who's in charge. That's a great responsibility. And see, we don't hold our leaders responsible. How can Louis Farrakhan, just using, not picking on the Nation of Islam, but I'm just using the Nation of Islam as an example. How can Louis Farrakhan get all these thousands and thousands of dollars or these preachers and nobody's held accountable for nothing? But this is what we do because we're looking out for, we're looking out, we're just looking for feel good rhetoric. And what has that done for us? It has done absolutely nothing. Brother Talib was talking about the support that Ukraine is getting from Europe. So my question to the Pan-Africans and all these, I love Africa folks. Where is your Africa that support us the way these Europeans are supporting Ukraine? Matter of fact, have they ever supported us? I know they would take from us. They would be happy to take your American dollar. They would be happy for you to come and foam at the mouth over them or whatever. They have more than you do. They have resources. They have diamonds, they have gold, uranium. 
all these different types of things. They don't give us nothing. America is sending millions and millions of dollars to Ukraine right now. And after the war is over, just like Brother Talib said, they got to rebuild. Those people don't have no money to rebuild. Who's going to be sending and giving the money to rebuild Ukraine? Guess what? Our money, because we're taxpayers in America, we are going to help rebuild Ukraine. <laughs> what is Africa doing for us? Where is our, where are the African nations sending money to help the so-called nigger in America? Now or ever. Don't think Africans would do is take. So why should I be head over heels with Africa and Africa? Now I can understand why Ukraine would be in, in love with America and wish they tripping because that leader is telling Joe Biden, it ain't enough. I want more. I want more. <laughs> And Joe Biden is like, look, sucker, <laughs> we got to be careful trying to give you more and more. You're going to cause us to get up, mess around and cause World War III. That's what it's about. And everybody's going to lose because somebody's going to push that nuclear bomb. The first one that go off is on and pop it. <laughs> it's on and pop it. You can see it. Once it gets started, <laughs> once it gets started, it's on and pop it. And I want to say this in my conclusion in response to, to Brother Steve. <clears throat> Let me find that comment. Because he said he said some things here. Let me see if I can find this one particular comment real quick. Who is way up there? Okay. Good Brother Steve says, it's really game over for black people, but maybe a small group of us can work among ourselves in a gated homestead community somewhere. I wish you just hit the hit the link, uh, brother Steve. Because I really can't do all this back and forth reading in the chat room. But I, I will try to, to address some of some of the this this uh in the uh in the chat room he says it's really game over for black people but maybe a small group group is the noun small is the adjective small it's not going to get you nowhere. Make you feel good, but it's not going to get you nowhere. If we can't do it as a people, and it's going to be hard as hell as a people, a small group ain't got nothing coming. You can't escape death. You can't run and hide. What make you think that you're going to do better? What are you, what are you going to do better as a small group when you're dealing with people that's way larger than you that can take you out anytime they feel like it. And that's including other undesirable black people, like you say, in your small group. How long are you going to hold out? How long is your little water going to hold out, your little guns, whatever you think that you can do in your small group? How long is it going to hold out? The only chance we got is as a people. A small group in this situation is not going to do you no good at all. That's just the reality of it. Good Brother Steve says we need to separate from the undesirables. Who are the undesirables? There are people who say that Angel Snub Nub 7 is an undesirable. Gay people are undesirables? Or is it just the criminal element? Let me tell you something about our brothers and sisters and the criminal element. There's a lot of prejudice and bias against our people. 
I was locked up. And people that's supposed to be so criminal, and a lot of them was charged with heinous crimes. Nobody is born wanting to be a prostitute. I never heard a little girl who, when I grow up, I want to be a prostitute and I want to be a stripper. Oh, when I grow up, I want to be like Al Capone. Things happen in people's lives. And I think it was Brother Talib, we talked about this in a prior uh, live stream. People, or uh, um, we was with Brother Denzel, uh, shout out to our brother Denzel Rogers. A lot of our people come through bad homes, bad parents. They come from bad places. And they get caught up in situations. Some people get started because they're trying to, trying to live. I'm hungry. Starving. All of us didn't have good parents. Some of us had no parents. Some of us been on our own since, they, since we was 13 or 14 years old. And back in the day, I know when my grandmother and people was growing up, they was leaving home at 10, 11 years old. Going around the country. This is why we have to become a people so they can have a support system so people can know that somebody loved them. Somebody cared for them. That's why they join gang. That's why a lot of people, they don't have any support. They don't have any family. That's why we get caught up in these things. What's an undesirable? An undesirable could be a Christian. I don't want to be around no Christian. They believe in that old stupid white man Jesus. That's an undesirable. Who is an undesirable? Who dictate who is an undesirable and who's not? You could be, good brother Steve, an undesirable. Oh, you don't believe in, in God. You're undesirable. You married to a white woman, you undesirable. Who determines who's an undesirable and who's not? This is what I'm saying about these groups. The group mentality, the individual mentality. I got mine, you get yours. Good brother Steve says a small group of us can become a group of people. Again, small. The word, the key word here is small. When you're dealing with a large problem, only a large group can deal with a large problem. A small group cannot deal with a large, a severely large problem. Make you feel better, make you feel good. Well, I, I ain't like them. I'm not like them, them Negroes over there. That's our problem. I'm not like them. But again, when the police see you, you're like them. When they blow your brains out or these race soldiers catch you in the wrong spot and they lynch you, we have to become family. We have to become a people. And sometimes we have to just bear with one another. You have to understand other people's situation we have to have compassion for for one another a lot of people come from bad places i when i was locked up because i listened to a person's story i had grown big men they wanted to tell somebody the story they never had nobody to listen to them and i just listened i didn't even say nothing and they would come and just sit there and just talk. Man, when I was little, and they just tell me their whole life story. Why are they telling me their life story? Because I listen to them. People, sometimes people just need somebody to talk to. And they think that person care about them. Yeah, these people are murderers. Yeah, they steal. Yeah, some of our people have done some horrific things. But deep down inside, that don't mean that's who they are. We have to have compassion for one another. Understanding. Because everybody wasn't privileged. 
to have a good house, good home. Listen to Brother Talib's story. Brother Talib, family problems. He came from a bad place. I would hope that Brother Talib would write that, begin to write his book. I would really help helped you to do, 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 to, uh, to do that. That book that the deacon said, he wants you to call it My Journey. I can't read all this, what Brother Steve is saying. Okay, so you think you're going to change the hearts of niggas on Demon Time with Mississippi Campaign? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Because you have to have a different mindset. You have to have a different attitude. You have to be patient. It's like dealing with sick people. When you are in the hospital and people are vomiting and, and they can't take a bath and they stanking, you can't go in there. Ooh, you stank. Ooh, you Why are you vomiting on me? They sick. You have to treat our people. You have to treat yourself. We're sick. Nobody is perfect. You can't be an uppity, bougie Negro. Because you got it together. Everybody don't have it got together. Everybody don't have $10 in their pocket like you do. Everybody not driving a Mercedes Benz like you do. Everybody can't pay their bills like you do. I remember I used to have that attitude. Well, I can do this. Everybody is not me. Do you know when I was locked up? Out of 100 years, I was the first person that was able to get out of that mental institution without those people's approval. There was many, many people before me. Everybody can't do, they're not in the situation. Most of those people can't hardly read and write, a lot of those people. And a lot of them, because of their mental problem, their drug addiction, they're not in the situation. I never had a problem with, with drugs, addiction, or alcohol. My strongest points was reading and writing. I was always a good writer and could read. That put me in a better position so I could accomplish what I accomplished. But many of those people couldn't do it. They was drug addicts, drunks. And some of them did suffer some kind of mental breakdown because they lost their father and couldn't get over it. Or they was in the army, post-traumatic uh, syndromes, things of this nature. We are so selfish and we only think about ourselves and you're going to get what you get. Good brother Steve says separation. I agree with separation when you see that somebody, there's no, there's no hope and they're violent and they're detrimental. I can understand that. But we have to you have to have compassion with a people that's destroyed and we've been in bad shape for over 400 years. Can't base everything on you and where you're at. Just like in our families, we have, we have people that's doing bad in our family. What do you do when you love your family? No matter wh what they are, you try to help them. You're going to try to help your drug addict uh, cousin and your alcoholic father and your prostitute mama. You want to try to help them to do, to do better. You do that because they're family. But when you don't see nobody as family, oh, that's them Negroes. Let me get the hell away from them. That's our problem. We have no love for nobody. We don't believe in giving somebody a chance. Malcolm X got a chance. He was in prison. You heard Malcolm X's life. Somebody gave him a chance, made him able to change, change his whole entire life. There's a lot of Malcolm X's out there. The original members of the Nation of Islam, all of them 
was prostitutes and criminals and drunks and that's what that's who the original members of the nation of, of Islam were. They are an example of what we can do if we were able to do that as a people. Instead of judging folks and being bougie and uppity. Because that's not you. I used to be that way until I was locked up. When I was locked up, I began to see things a whole lot different. Those people aren't as bad as you may think. They're human beings. And a lot of them have remorse for some of these heinous crimes. Some of them did because they was under the influence of alcohol or drugs or maybe post-traumatic syndrome or something like that. We have to have compassion and understanding and empathy for others. But if you don't see me as family, then you don't. See, people that see me as family, they say, oh, that's Angel Snub Number 7. He don't believe in God. They just laugh it off. But Angel going to help us do what we need to do. That's family. They ain't gonna be tripping off the fact that I'm talking about I don't care about God and whatever. I don't care about eating pork or whatever. Oh, that's angel. That's that's how he is. Family. But when you're a dictator and you're a damn tyrant yourself, and you think you better than somebody, see, that's our problem. We think we better. We have the same attitude and mindset as the oppressor because he's better. So since the white man is better than black folks, they should work for me so I can live a life of leisure. That's all I got to say.